The Traveler made its last stand here on Earth. It created the Ghost and the Guardians to defend from the onslaught of the Witness and its disciples. The Traveler has been to many worlds before Earth though, uplifting species and leaving ruin in its wake. Today we discuss every location the Traveler has visited and the impact it's had on various alien species. The first known location of the Traveler appears to be on a planet, a possible homeworld of the Witnesses' species. They called it the Gardener, and it was trapped in the crust of the planet, partially buried. We're unsure if this is where it originated, maybe crash-landed, or was somehow formed here. This species began to worship it. The giant orb they found gave them technology, power, and new exploration opportunities. Although this was their savior of sorts, this gardener never spoke to them, which made them angry, leading to their crusade to acquire the veil among the stars, an artifact of darkness, trying to use it on the gardener to rewrite the universe. How they figured this out, I'm not sure, but the gardener fled, thus starting their revenge plot, forming into the witness and chasing it across the universe. The witness's first victims were once like you. Struggling for survival, bolstered by hope, and so their hopes became reality. They called it the Gardener, their deity of life. It ushered them into a golden age. For eons they prospered, but their newfound god never spoke to them. It lavished them with gifts but not with guidance. The Traveler also visited Ralk's homeworld of Lubre. We are divided, split by a shimmering orb that appeared briefly in our sky, as if having two suns isn't already crowded enough. What of this shimmering orb? It was before my time. It came. We evolved. It left. Left us with a mess. Those who believed in good progress. Those who didn't. Those who believed dwelled in the city, controlled it, filled it only with light of the sapphiric sun and endless day to keep the horrors of night away, revealing the horrors among us. They pushed progress for the sake of the few, while the rest of us took our chances under the alternating suns. So you can see a common theme here. Shimmering Orb, the traveler in this case, arrives somewhere, brings triumph and glory, and leaves. The story of Ralk and Lubre goes much more in depth than that, but that card explains the Traveler's arrival and departure from their expanding civilization. Our organs detect a 53rd moon in orbit of Fundament, a Traveler, divine presence of the sky. Now we know what arranged the syzygy. The Traveler visited the moons around Fundament, the Hive homeworld. As heard in Season of the Deep Dialogue and seen in some of the lore, the Traveler blessed the Ammonites and the Harmony, different alien species, before fleeing their system. The Hive saw the Sky Traveler as the intruder. The Witness led Savathun and her sisters into the Deep to take the worms instead. When the Traveler was there the whole time, their species could have been uplifted. Maybe it would have been different. These frail siblings will soon be claimed by the light. Unless we claim them first, we will tell the most cunning sibling of a cataclysm, the prophecy of great loss. We will feed her fear, her pride. We will say, young Sathona, the end is coming. A god wave. In the sky, there is only death. But salvation lies in the deep. For the first time, the Ammonites broke us. Hordes of my throne came rotting in tribute. And the Federal. 
So you have the Traveler visiting different worlds like Lubre, but also places where war is common. Maybe the Traveler didn't know it at the time, but the Hive became a brutal force and destroyed all these civilizations it uplifted. It's a paradise, carefully tended lakes and rivers, water everywhere. Wind their way between fields of lush, iridescent crops and into groves of starkly colored trees. Every inch of the land seems engineered, brushed by a sculptor's hand for form and function both. The sky is a light pink, spotted with clouds and crowded with ships. Thick lanes of aerial traffic soar through the air, tightly managed and seemingly endless. And beyond it all, above the clouds, hangs a perfect alabaster sphere. The image wobbles, shaking, flickering as if a ghost is blinking, and the fragment ends. Our Elixni friends share a similar tale. That card explained Rees, their homeworld after the arrival of the Traveler. The Elixni were even more advanced than humanity was during our Golden Age. They had spaceships, all this traffic in their airspace, and conquered multiple systems. They had unlimited ether, crafted new technologies. They too would of course suffer a similar fate. The arrival of the Black Fleet left the Elixni world in ruin. What we called the Collapse, they called the Whirlwind, same type of thing, when their great machine left their world and destroyed all hope. After that, the Elixni fought civil wars against one another and eventually decided to chase the great machine across the stars. All these alien species were interested in the Traveler's terraforming and paracausal capabilities. The Witness species, the Elixni, the Hive. Some wanted to destroy it, some wanted to find it to bring back their glory. This was a world of prosperity and peace, not unlike your golden age. We worshipped the great machine, but fate intervened. With it came a whirlwind of destruction. In the chaos, the great machine fled abandoning us all. We called it the Traveler, and its arrival changed us forever. Great cities were built on Mars and Venus. Mercury became a garden world. Human lifespan tripled. It was a time of miracles. We stared out at the galaxy and knew that it was our destiny to walk in the light of other stars. During the Golden Age, the Traveler arrived in Seoul. Originally called Planet X, humans were curious as to what the sphere was and where it came from. Moon X is back. Oh boy, we saw what it did to Jupiter. Or with. You could think of it as with Jupiter. Whatever. The thing made some major changes to two of Jupiter's moons. Yep, then it blinks out, gone 14 months, then Mercury, and then blink, out, 7 months. And you can't track it. Oh, I think I might have a way. But right now that doesn't matter because guess what just showed up hanging out next to Venus? You're kidding. I wish. Let me see that. What's it gonna do there? I don't know. Magic, I guess? You know what really worries me? Next time it blinks out. Where does it go? When the Traveler arrived in Seoul, it would visit Jupiter, Mercury, and Venus in a short time, terraforming them all in different ways. What's interesting is what it says it blinks out. I'm not sure if the Traveler just picks up and leaves or if it, like, you know, teleports instantly, but something to keep in mind. Humanity first made contact with the Traveler on Mars during the Ares-1 mission. This was what's seen in the opening cutscene for Destiny 1. And again here, the Traveler began to terraform Mars, bringing rain to the planet for the first time. The Traveler gave these worlds their own golden ages, technology spaceships, terraforming their surfaces. As Osiris told us in Lightfall, the Traveler creates, creates life, and humans were watching this unfold in real time. Cradles formed where the Traveler went, mysterious ruins of its terraforming aftermath. 
It rained on Mars, new lush jungles on Venus. It made Mercury look like this. The Traveler's last known location at the start of the collapse was Io. As the Black Fleet would invade, it left Io and made its last stand for once at Earth. Instead of running like it's done so many times before to so many different species, it fought back, creating ghosts, guardians, but also bringing about our own collapse. Earth is the current location of the Traveler, well, above Earth. The sphere currently pre-final shape is a lifeless shell as it hangs in orbit, but the real battle is about to take place inside its pale heart. Those forces who would chase it for eons across space were now here and ready to rewrite the universe to fit their own goals. So there you have a basic overview of everywhere the Traveler has been. The implications of the Traveler for different alien species is huge. We see Ralk eventually destroyed his entire species, and I'm sure the Traveler's departure had a part to play in that. The whole reason the Elixni are the way they are is because the Traveler left. They wouldn't be here in the first place, they wouldn't have formed different houses and made Rees reborn on Europa. But anyway, Guardians, if you'd like to see some more Destiny lore and mysteries just like this video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. I thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.